Hello and welcome to How to Feel Great and Stay in Shape for 2017. Thank you so much for joining me on this call tonight. Uh, can I just check everyone can hear me okay? There's a chat box on your screen so if you want to type in yes or no then please do and please feel free during this webinar to type in any questions into the chat bar as we go. Okay so Today we're going to talk about how we can really feel great for 2017. And this is something I feel really important about. When we start the year, so many people start with resolutions and intentions and all these things that they want to do. And some people maybe achieve them and some people maybe don't. So I felt it was a really good time to reach out to people and show people some tools that I've learned to really effectively make changes in your life that actually are going to stick. So many people uh, go into diets and we're going to talk about this a little bit later and it's really successful for a bit and then they fall off and it all goes back to where it was or worse. Um, and this is something that can be avoided and it all comes down to really our mindset. So today what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at positive mindsets because this is a really important part to feeling great is your mental attitude. We're going to be looking at aligning yourself with your purpose because this is a key. If you're setting intentions that are in not in line with your purpose, then you're not working to your full strength. And this is a really important thing to be doing. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about the body and what the body actually needs to thrive. Um, we're also going to be looking at ways to get in shape and ways to cleanse and clear out the old stagnant energy. It's great. So many people are saying hello. Hello to everyone. And thank you so much for joining those who are just coming in now. So. Really, I want to start by asking you some questions. If you've got a pen and paper, that's great. If not, um, don't worry too much, but it's something you can listen again to and do later if you want. But I want you to start by just thinking for a minute about how you view yourself. How do you view yourself? I don't want you to think too hard about it. First things that come into your mind. If anyone wants to share it on here, please feel free to. So after we've thought about how do I actually view myself? You know, this is a really massive thing because how you view yourself really affects your outlook on life. It really affects how you're going to consume things. So someone's just shared that they feel fat. Um, so that's how they view them, viewing themselves as fat. And the thing is, if we're viewing ourselves in a certain way, we need to really turn this around and we need to say, okay, I may be viewing myself as fat, but what can I do about this situation? And seeing beyond that to the beauty within, seeing our light shining through. And it's, it's right this time of year, people are feeling bigger than they want to be. They are feeling bloated. Um, Someone's saying they feel disorganized and they let people down. These are all great things to be coming up with. And thank you for sharing and being honest. It's a, it's a really good thing. And starting the year can feel like that, can't, can't it? Because we've had this whirlwind of Christmas and the holidays and overeating and overindulging in excess. And that leaves you going, oh, hang on. <laughs> Where am I? What's going on? So this is something that we need to really address and we need to look at. Uh, another thing I want you to think about for a minute is why are you here? Like, what do you feel your purpose is? And this is quite a big question, obviously. It's um, something that you can always come back to and think about uh, again later. But what is your purpose? Why do you feel you're, you're on this planet? Because let me tell you something, everyone has a role. Everyone is here for a reason. And when you can align yourself to that reason, things really begin to fall in place and you can see things much clearer. So I want you to think, and again, if anyone wants to share, why are you here? What are your gifts that you have to give this world? 
And, you know, we're all very quick to see our negative points, but what about our positive points? You know, where do you shine your light? Because you all have a light that you're shining. So where is your, your strength? It's not so easy, is it, when it comes to the positive? But they're there. They're always there, those positive messages. So, so someone's saying they're hiding their light under a bushel. Well, I don't want you to. I want you to shine it out. Someone's saying to help others. That's great. That's, that's really good. That, that's your, your positive thing. That's your, your gift to the world is to help others. And it's an amazing one, helping others, because in service to others, we serve ourselves. In teaching others, we teach ourselves. You know, the world is a great teacher. The world is a great healer. And the more we can give from a place of openness and love, the more we can really grow ourselves. It, it's an amazing thing when you look at the, the yogis, they call it karma yoga. You know, the Buddhists practice it with, with serving and helping others. Christians help do, doing this as well. You know, everywhere around us, this is part of society. It's that helping others. And it's, it's a really key thing to be doing. So for those of you who haven't answered yet in this one, have a think about it because it's a really important one to think about. So then the next question that comes is a little bit deeper, a little bit more tricky, because if you have a purpose, which we all have, then how do you serve your body in looking after it to serve that purpose? So how are you supporting your body to allow your body to support your purpose? Because remember, without this physical shell, you couldn't fulfill your purpose. So your physical shell is the thing that enables you to actually achieve your goals, to achieve your purpose. So without this physical shell, you could not achieve what you are put here to achieve. So, this then brings us to the next point. How in 2017 can you best support this physical being, being in supporting your vision? Because so often we forget, don't we? We forget about this body. We forget that actually whatever we want to do, whatever our dreams, our goals are, if we're not actually looking after this, we won't get there. We won't be able to do it. Someone's just said they're going to eat well, exercise, and remember to relax and breathe deeply. Now, you know what? That is a key. One of those points, well, all of those things are key, and we'll be addressing those points, but one of those is really, really important, and it's the relaxing. Because stress is one of the biggest killers on this planet. Stress has the most negative impact upon your body out of anything you could be doing. So the more stressed we are, the more acidic our body becomes. The more stressed we are, the less we absorb nutrients. The more stressed we are, the more our gut becomes out of balance. The more stressed we are, the more it affects our hormonal balance, the more it affects our adrenals, the more it affects our immune system, and on and on and on. So we can see that stress has a really important part and finding ways to remove or reduce stress is really key. So exercise, someone said, is great. That's right, exercise will clear blocks. And uh, after this webinar, I will be posting a link up on Facebook for um, some really lovely exercises that my husband has done called the well-being exercises. So there's a video for you, really simple, easy to do for anyone and everyone, and that will actually help to remove physical and energetic blocks in the body. Someone said, Keeping life simple. Yes, simplicity is amazing, isn't it? You know, simplicity is really such an under, over, underrated thing. You know, it's, it's really, really important. So what we need to start looking at is the way we feel about ourselves. The love we have for ourselves 
is reflected in the choices that we make health-wise. So however you feel about you will affect those choices on food, on general well-being. Because if you're not loving yourself, then you'll think, oh, it doesn't matter, I can have another donut. What does it matter? I'm already fat. What's another donut going to do? But if you think, hang on, this body is my temple. This body is supporting my soul. This body is supporting me to achieve my purpose. Whoa. How can I support this body? Do I want that donut? Well, how's that going to feed me? Is that going to make me thrive and grow? Don't think so. Or is it actually going to make me suffer? And why do we want to suffer? Why would we want to put suffering on ourselves, except for if we are not loving ourselves, to punish ourselves? So this is really the first key, is looking at how we feel about ourselves. Because unless we address that, unless we fundamentally address our mindset, we are going to find it very hard to make those positive choices food-wise or anything else-wise. So then you think, well, how do I start loving myself if I've struggled for however many years to love myself in the first place? And you know what? It can be hard. It can be a challenge to start with. So what we have to do is we have to say, OK. One of my favorite ones, and some of you know this because I, I've talked about it quite a lot, is Ho'oponopono. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And Ho'oponopono is an ancient Hawaiian blessing. And if you say that to yourself in the mirror every day for the month of January, you will start to notice profound shifts within your being. It's hard to say it to yourself and actually look in your eyes and really mean it. But when you do, it will open up things because you're forgiving yourself. You know, you're actually forgiving yourself. You're forgiving yourself for all the times that you've abused yourself, for all the times you've hated yourself, for all those times that you've not been loving to yourself or to others, for all the times you felt guilty about not being loving to others. You know, the amount of guilt we carry as people is amazing. Especially if you're a mother, the amount of guilt you end up having about your children, about this, about this, about what you haven't done. Oh, yo, yo, you know, and we need to drop that because guilt is not serving us. Abusing ourselves is not serving us. Lack of self-love is not serving us. So my question is, do you want to serve yourself? Do you want to help others? Well, you know what? You need to help yourself and love yourself. And this is really the key thing we need to do. So that is your first exercise for 2017. Ho'oponopono. Or something like that. If it doesn't resonate with you, say something similar to those lines. But if you do do Ho'oponopono, it has a very powerful energy behind it with all the other people who have said that. You know, someone's just said they have a lot of guilt. I think most people have a lot of guilt that they carry with them. And it's time to forgive yourself. And I would love to have feedback on my Juliet's Kitchen Facebook page or the group, my group there, you know, or on my page on how you're feeling about this, how the Ho'oponopono is working for you this month and how it's helping you to really transform and shift things because it will. And it's a really simple thing to do and it doesn't take long. So this is a good way that we can start shifting our positive mindset. The next thing that we can do is we can start to catch ourselves. So every time that we're saying negative comments about ourselves, every time we're feeling low, we're feeling rubbish about ourselves, we're putting ourselves down. I don't deserve it. Oh, I'm, I'm, worth, I'm worthless. I'm this, I'm that. Every time we do that, we need to start catching ourselves and say, hang on. Would you talk to your child like that? Because if you wouldn't talk to your child like that, don't talk to yourself like that. So we need to start reprogramming our brains. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a really key thing to start that reprogramming. 
so we can actually start th thinking hang on like we did in the beginning why am I here what is my purpose what what where do I shine where are my good points because we all have them so stop dwelling on the negative everyone's got things they're not so good at everyone there is no person on this planet who is perfect nor should we be god think about how boring life would be if we were all perfect so we have to have strengths and weaknesses. It's the way of life. And by accepting those, we grow. By accepting, you know, I, I can say, you know what, I am not the best at cleaning. And that's okay. I accept that. I've got a lot of other good qualities. And that's okay. And then it takes this edge off it. You know, it's like, that's fine. I can, I'll leave that to someone else. I'm not so good at organizing certain things. So that's okay too. I know that that's not my strength. And I don't need to beat myself up. I have beat myself up in the past over it but not now. I look for support and help from others. Yeah? And this is what we need to do. We can look and call for support from others for our weak points and let and share our good points. So the next thing we're thinking about is if this body is a temple, and this body has to serve a purpose, and this body is here to help support us, then what does this body actually need in order to run? You know, we forget this bit sometimes, that actually this physical body needs certain things to actually work. And we've become a society where the food we're eating, we're eating to tantalize our taste buds for quick fixes, and to fill our stomachs and that's kind of it most of the time we are not thinking what does my body need to run because that is the purpose of food yes it can taste delicious i'm not denying that yes it can tantalize your taste buds i'm not denying that and i'm not saying we shouldn't have pleasure and enjoy things and have that sensual wonderful experience but it should not be affecting the running of this machine. So, what does your body actually need? Well, the first thing it needs that it has to have and it cannot function without, it can function without it for maybe a few minutes. I think three is the most. I mean, I'm sure there are some yogis out there who have gone for a bit longer, but, you know, approximately, oxygen now people think well yeah oxygen of course but we we all breathe don't we you all breathe don't you well of course you do or you wouldn't be here but how we breathe what we're breathing is really key because our body needs oxygen every cell has to have oxygen in it for it to work properly where there is alkalinity, there is oxygenation. So the more oxygen we can get into our cells, the more oxygen we can get into our muscles, the more things will work at peak performance. So athletes drink beetroot juice quite a lot because beetroot juice delivers oxygen into the blood. So this is a really important thing. We need to increase our oxygenation. <clears throat> How do we do this? Well, breathing properly, deep belly breathing, is what we should be doing. Now, a lot of people, when they breathe in, they go like this. This is not breathing properly, okay? When we breathe properly, we can expel 70% of the toxins in our body. Not when we're breathing shallowly from this chest area. We need to breathe deep in our belly. So I want you to take a minute, and I want you to do some belly breaths. I want you to put your hand on your belly, and I want you to imagine that inside your belly is a big balloon. And as you breathe in, you blow up this balloon. And as you breathe out, the balloon contracts. Okay, so breathing in, your belly is expanding out. And breathing out, your belly is contracting in. So I want you to do this in your own time. We're going to do three breaths. I'll talk you through the first one and then carry on in your own time. So if you want to close your eyes so you can really focus your attention on your breath, on connecting in with your breath and taking a deep breath in 
allowing your belly to expand as it's a big balloon expanding out and then slowly breathing out releasing the air your belly contracting and carry on with two more breaths like this Did anyone notice a difference in how they felt by doing that breathing? I know for me, when I connect in with my breath, instantly, within a second, my whole body starts to relax. I feel the energy in the room shift and you really notice a difference within your being. And this is for 30 seconds maybe. So imagine you did this for a minute a day, for five minutes a day. First of all, you would relax, so you're dealing with some of the stress issues. Second of all, you would allow these toxins to be expelled from your body more. And thirdly, you'd be allowing more oxygenation into the body, so helping your cells to work better, helping your body to function better. Someone's just said when they do a few breaths, they go inside themselves. That's exactly right. When we start to breathe and we concentrate on our breath, it allows us to really still and to focus quietly on ourselves. Someone said, my head feels more clear. That's exactly right. We can suddenly get this clarity and this perspective. So if you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed, like there's too much, you don't know which way to go, take five, you know, a minute and just stop and just breathe because we can get so much more clarity and perspective on things. Instead of when we get angry and stressed, our breath gets more and more shallow and it's up here and our body actually goes into fight or flight. There have been studies done that show that actually if you breathe deeply, you cannot be angry. Physically, physiologically, you cannot hold on to anger when you breathe deeply. And this is such an important thing. So just take that time to breathe. Not for long, don't stress about it, it doesn't have to be a big deal, but just spend that little bit of time. And if you feel yourself frizz frazzling out like this, as we all so often do, just stop. Breathe, center, and then carry on. And you'll notice a big difference. Okay, so oxygen's the first point. Second point is water, hydration. The BBC put out an article today saying detoxing is dangerous, be careful, everyone's detoxing in the new year and last year a 47 year old went to hospital because of low sodium levels because she drank too much water and took herbal supplements to cleanse her body. So I did think, well what about all those people over Christmas who have been admitted into hospital with alcohol poisoning or food or overeating? obesity, anything like this, you don't, you don't hear that about that, but you just hear someone's low sodium levels uh, because they've drank too much water. Now this, there is an important point in this that we do have to be aware of our sodium levels within our body and salt is key. Water is key too and most people are chronically dehydrated. Now if you're chronically dehydrated, your body is not going to work properly. You are not going to be eliminating toxins from your body as you should. So drinking adequate water really is essential. And then it's looking at well, what water am I drinking as well? Not, I don't recommend people drink tap water. Clean water, sp good spring water, a uh, good filtered water. You know, this is the key. Ideally, we want living spring water <laughs> that is alive and vibrant and full of a magnetic charge. And um, this isn't always possible, and that's okay. So we do the best that we can. But what I would recommend to everyone is to put a little pinch of good salt into their water. And when I say good salt, I mean either a raw grey sea salt or a Celtic salt. Um, this is the ideal salt to put into your water. And a tiny pinch, you won't notice it. It's not like you're going to suddenly be drinking seawater. You don't even notice it in there. So put in a little bit of salt, put in some lemon juice in there to alkalize the water more. And when we do this, we also increase the hydration levels in our body. 
how do we do this? Well, what happens is as you drink the water, the body goes, hang on, this is not just water, there's something else in there. So it pulls those nutrients, the sodium and the lemon, into the cells to extract that, but at the same time, it's hydrating you to a much greater level. And this is really the key. So someone's just said, how much water should they be drinking? Very good question. I drink three and a half liters of water a day. And I feel that if I don't, I am not adequately hydrated. How many of you get to four o'clock and you have a bit of a headache, you're feeling grumpy and ratty, maybe you get snappy with whoever's around you? Um, anyone feel that? I know I used to. I used to not drink anywhere near enough water and I didn't really think about it until um, really until about four o'clock when I started feeling all these things and I was like what's going on here why am I feeling so rubbish and then I thought hang on actually I've not really drank any water so my trick for drinking water is I wake up in the morning and when I first get up in the morning I will drink two big glasses of water with a little bit of salt and a little bit of lemon in it and this really helps me to start getting the taste for water does that make sense so if you haven't drank water in the morning you don't necessarily your body memory doesn't actually necessarily think oh actually this is water i need water i'm thirsty and it may be that you get to three or four and you haven't drank much and then you go oh actually i am really thirsty now but if you start first thing in the morning you start hydrating yourself your body remembers and it goes ah oh, this is what it feels like to be hydrated this is really nice i like this i'm going to do this and then you keep wanting to drink through the day it's the same with food. If you don't eat any food till late afternoon, your body doesn't really think about it so much. Whereas if you start eating earlier and you keep going and keep going, you keep thinking about it. So that makes sense. So yes, bicarbonate of soda alkalizes the water. Um, my, my favorite personally is, is salt and lemon, but that's my personal favorite. Yes, bamboo salt you can use as well. Those are all uh, perfectly fine things to use. You can put crystals in your water to charge up your water and energize it. You can, um, there's some beautiful things. The implosion research devices um, do some amazing spiralized water um, uh, vortexes that really charge up your water. Amazing things. You can get necklaces or rings to wear. You can get things that you put on your house inlet pipe. Um, you know, you can get things, mandalas that you put underneath your water. If you've not seen it, check out The Hidden Messages of Water by Masuto Amato um, and look at how thoughts affect water. Massive subject. So I just wanted to touch on that point because energetically we can really start to charge up our water. So the next thing we need to look at is if this body is like a machine, if this body has a purpose to achieve, then what happens if we don't move it? What happens if you don't move a machine? It rusts up, doesn't it? It seizes up, it can't do much. And this is exactly what happens to our body. Our physical body is designed to move. And unless we're moving it, we're not freeing up tension in our body, we're not allowing oxygenation to circulate, we're not allowing blood to circulate properly, we're not assisting the body in naturally cleansing itself. We're not allowing the energy to flow. So being stagnant is a really bad thing for us. You know, we were designed to move. And it doesn't have to be complicated movements. It doesn't have to be weightlifting or anything like this. It doesn't have to be, you know, running 10 miles. But movement, gentle movement, even just sitting, circling your shoulders. You know, this is great, circling your neck. All these things are very, very simple, but can be very effective. Doing this with your hands. You know, so if you're sat at a desk all day, move your body. Make sure that you stretch. Yoga is an amazing thing for this because you can do some really gentle yoga. You don't have to get in all these contortionate positions, but you can do gentle yoga that will really affect your movement. And the more you move, the deeper you breathe, the more you oxygenate your body, the more things flow, the more you cleanse things out. So, you know, it's a very, very key thing for us to do the better your organs work as well. You know, if you do little movements before you eat, little circling movements like this, then you get your digestive system flowing. 
And this is really important as well, that we move these, these organs around our stomach area so that we can help eliminate as well. Because elimination is key, isn't it? If we're not eliminating properly, guess what? We're not removing toxins from our body that our body is trying to remove and they get reabsorbed. So really making sure that we are eliminating on a regular basis is key. It really is. And water, hydration helps with this as well, you know, but movement and obviously fiber as well, making sure we're consuming fiber so that our bowels can move. I read that John Wayne, when he died and they investigated his insides, had 40 pounds of mucoid plaque of like impacted fecal matter. 40 pounds. That's a lot of weight. That's like three and a half stone. That's a lot of weight to carry around. And a lot of people are carrying around a lot of fecal matter that's inside them, that's impacted and compacted up there. And so they're constantly unable to fully eliminate. So, you know, looking into how your elimination is going and if you need colonics or if you need to do something to help support your colon is, is really important. So in order for our body to run properly, we've got oxygen, we've got water, we've got movement. And then we're looking at obviously the essential foods that we need. So we need our fats, we need our proteins, we need our carbohydrates, we need our fibers we've talked about, we need our enzymes, we need our vitamins and minerals. You know, so we need to have a good balanced diet where we're getting all of these things into our lives. And a good way to do this <laughs> is by eating a variety of food. The more variety we have in what we eat, obviously the more nutrients we're going to be getting. And personally, I recommend eating more of a plant-based diet um, than an animal diet because eating animals comes with its own issues and animals are highly uh, acidic to the body. Now, some people need to eat a little bit of animals and that's fine, that's your choice. Everyone needs to choose what's right for them. If you are eating animals, you need to make sure it's organic because otherwise you're getting all of those um, antibiotics and <coughs> um, hormones and everything else in there. And, and all the stress, you know, this is something we really need to think about. If you are gonna eat animals, make sure it comes from the best source possible because otherwise you are eating all of the stress, all of the cortisol that is in them and that's going in you and that's affecting your stress levels. So wherever you are on the spectrum, it doesn't matter but my recommendation is head more towards a plant-based diet because this is really what's going to make you thrive more and more. Um, and obviously if you need any guidance or assistance on that, then do let me know and I'm happy to help guide any of you on that subject. <coughs> so we've talked about what the body actually needs, the basics that, that we all learn about when we're in, in uh, secondary school. one thing that we need to talk about is obviously getting in shape so a lot of people say okay in the new year I'm going to lose a few stone I'm really going to get in shape and there was a very interesting study done recently it was done by the American Gut Association who are doing some great work on the gut really amazing things that are happening now um, with the research into the gut and what this study found was that people who go on diets often fail the diets, not because of their willpower, but because of their gut bacteria. Because what happens is your gut bacteria changes as you grow. Your gut bacteria is affected by what you consume. So the more sugar and processed foods you have, the more bad bacteria you have in your body. Now guess what those bad bacteria need to thrive and survive? That's right, they need more processed food and more sugar. So we get caught in this cycle because you're eating the sugar and the processed food which feeds the bad bacteria so they start growing. The good bacteria get smaller and smaller and the bad bacteria have now taken hold. So you're trying to quit the sugar and the processed foods but what happens is these bad bacteria are saying, feed me Seymour, if any of you have seen um, Little Shop of Horrors, um, and they need to be fed. 
So this is a really important thing, unless you're actually helping to eliminate those bad bacteria and supporting that elimination, you're going to make it very hard for yourself because you're going to be constantly getting these cravings being signaled up to your brain. Because guess what? Your gut has 100 million neurons and those 100 million neurons are communicating constantly to the brain. So we're getting these messages and these cravings and we're thinking it's us. And guess what? It's not us. It's not us. It's these bacteria or parasites or fungal overgrowths in your gut that are directly communicating with your brain. So what you need to do to successfully be able to change the way you're eating is you need to look at addressing the gut bacteria at the same time. Now, this is a massive subject, but some keys, just a few, few points that you can start to introduce, which is really useful. Um, aged garlic extract or raw garlic really really good if you're on any kind of warfarin or blood thinner please do not take these because they act as a blood thinner in themselves um, <clears throat> and it's always good to check um, if you've got any medical conditions if you are going to take any supplements uh, just to make sure that they're all safe with what you're taking so aged garlic or raw garlic very good at killing bad bacteria oil of oregano amazing at killing bad bacteria basil either basil oil or fresh basil, wonderful at killing bad bacteria. A grapefruit seed extract, another thing that's very good at killing bad bacteria. So these are a few things that you could start to introduce into your diet. Tulsi, which is holy basil, is another one. To start working at killing these bad bacteria so that they are not controlling you. They are not controlling what you're eating. You are taking a hand on them and you are reducing their population. And at the same time as reducing their population, you need to increase the good bacteria population. And this can be done by taking good probiotics. Udo's do a great multi-strain, eight multi-strain probiotic, which is very good. BioCult is another one, which I highly recommend. Um, and there are others out there now. More and more are coming out all the time. Sauerkraut is one that you can make yourself. And the recipes for that is on my website. You can also um, make kefir, water kefir, or kombucha. These are all great natural probiotics that you can start to have to really repopulate your gut so that then when you are changing your diet, you can succeed. You're not going to be hampered by some other organism in your body controlling you. I hope that makes uh, sense to you all. So we've looked at the gut and how that can affect us. And now we've got to look at, well, you know what? You are what you eat. So if you eat a donut, you're a bit of a donut. And this is a really important thing, aside from the joke of the donut. But, you know, what we put into us affects the whole running of our being. It affects our mood. It affects our mindset. It affects our energy levels. It affects the balance of our blood. It affects everything. So really looking at what you are eating and not looking at it in a way of deprivation of, oh, my God, I can't eat this. Oh, my God, I can't eat this. Oh, my God. Because that, all you're doing is exacerbating the problem because you're entering into this negative mindset about food. And we don't want that. We don't want more drama and more issues. Most of us have enough drama and issues when it comes to food. We want to get rid of that. So what we want to do is we really want to address, okay, well, if I am what I eat, what do I want to be? And this comes back to your self-image of yourself, your view of yourself. What do I want to be? Do I want to be vibrant and shiny? Yes. That's what I want to be. I want to thrive. Do you want to thrive? Do you actually want to thrive? You need to ask yourself this question. Or are you scared to thrive? Are you scared to shine your light and be the best you can be? Don't be. Please don't be. Shine as brightly as you can because the more you shine, the more you give others permission to shine. You know, this is really key. We all need to start shining together and supporting each other to shine. It's making me go a bit uh, teary-eyed that, but you know, it's, it's such an important thing. And this is a really important part of my work, you know, is, is wanting to support others to really shine and be vibrant. Um, you know, because I, I spent enough time hiding my light because I didn't want to be different. I was different and I didn't want to be different because I I, people would make fun of me. And this happens everywhere, doesn't it? People are scared when they see people shining, so they want to suppress it and make fun of it. 
But it's okay because the only reason they're doing that, and I learned this, is because they want to shine and they don't have that courage. So the more you say, you know what, it's okay, make fun of me. It's fine. I'm going to keep shining. And then they go, wow, well, maybe if they can do it, maybe I can. You know? So when you eat food, think, is this going to make me shine? Or is this not? Like, is this living food that is going to increase my vibration and make me glow? Or is this not? And this is the key because then you're not depriving yourself of this stuff. You know? You're thinking, yes, this is what I want. This will feed my being. This will feed my soul. This will feed this temple. So it's switching, it's going back to switching your mindset instead of, I can't have this, woe is me. That's someone's just said, this is very, that's very difficult. There are lots of social pressures to have junk food and people get made fun of. <coughs> I totally know that. I totally get that and I have been there. I have been there for many, many years being made fun of. But you know what? People are coming around now and people are going, actually, you know what? You look really well. You know what? You don't get sick that often. You know what? You're really vibing. How do you have so much energy? Actually, you know what? I want some of what you're having. I remember going to a party once many years ago and uh, everyone was um, on lots of stuff. And I was in the kitchen making raw chocolates and raw chocolate smoothies. And people were laughing at me. And I was up till six o'clock dancing on my raw chocolate smoothies and my raw chocolates, didn't have a hangover, felt great, was really vibrant, and people slowly kept coming to me more and more and saying, what are you having? Like, what's that? Why are you having that? And instead of the fun being made, which at first it was, but I just said, you know what, that's okay. Like, each to their own, live and let live. People came round, and they will come round. You just have to, and I know it's hard, you just have to have that firm belief in yourself, in the fact that you're actually supporting your body. You know? And yes, that can be hard. It really can be. But the more you do it, the stronger you get and the easier it gets. And nowadays, people are waking up. People are waking up at a rapid rate. So know that you have support and there are other people out there like you. And uh, you can always send me a message if you're feeling low and I'll try and encourage you um, to keep going, you know. And, you know, you, you do see those rewards of your immune system getting better. You know, you do see these rewards. Yeah, raw chocolate smoothie. Uh, there's a recipe on my website. Type in raw chocolate smoothie into the search on my website, julietskitchen.tv, and it's delicious. It's divine. You know, it will really fuel you and power you through your day. Um, no, raw cacao powder doesn't have any caffeine in it. It's got theobromine in, which is a sister component. So it does energize you, but not in the same way that caffeine does. I haven't drank... Uh, had any caffeine in about nine years and when I do I get really jittery and shaky and you know it really affects my body negatively but I have raw chocolate and that doesn't have the same effect um so you know when you're cutting foods out because it is important to start looking at what you're consuming and don't get caught in the diet trap this is a really important thing don't go for no added sugar because usually it's a chemical SHI tea storm, you know, and you don't want that. You don't want to fill your body with toxins. You want as natural as possible. That is the key. Um, not filled with junk, natural. Um, so, you know, starting to look at the back on labels, you know, a lot of my family laugh at me because I'm like, can I look at the label? I'm always doing this, turning it over, just checking because I want to eat things that are as natural as possible. You know, ideally making things yourself, you can't always do that. That's fine. You know, you don't have to be a slave to the kitchen. And a lot of this stuff doesn't have to take a lot of time. Um, I've got a great book, ebook called Divine Detox, which is a seven day detox that takes you through really simple, quick, easy recipes uh, to support yourself on a detox. Um, 
So it's important that we start to become aware of what foods are around us, what foods will really support us and what foods won't. So obviously refined sugar is not going to be supporting you. Refined sugar is toxic waste. Table salt will not support you. Table salt, salt should be eliminated completely from your diet because it is dire. So we need to start looking at these things. Reducing your gluten is always a good idea. Reducing the amount of wheat you consume. Wheat has been so hybridized that it now, um, the gluten molecule is so large that it's, it plays a lot of havoc on our digestive system. Um, even if you're not gluten intolerant, I would def definitely recommend reducing the amount that you're having. And now there are so many alternatives. You know, you've got buckwheat flour, which is gluten free and delicious, and you can make great cakes with it you know, and use it as you would normal flour. We've got things like uh, coconut flour, almond flour. You know, there's a load of, of wonderful, um, uh, amazing uh, gluten-free flours. You can get brown rice pasta. That's lovely if you like pasta. That's a great way to have it. Um, so really starting to look at what you're reducing um, is, is key for you to do. And it's increasing as much as possible those live foods in your diet. The more live foods you're eating, guess what? The more life you have in you. You know, and it's not brain science when you start thinking about it. It's like if something is sprouted, it's living, it's vibrant, it's alive, then if you consume that, you're getting this living, vibrant energy. If you consume something that's dead, then what's that going to give you? Well, it's not going to give you life, is it? It's not going to give you vibrance. It's not going to make you shine. So this is a really important thing to, to think about is, is how much life force are you putting in your body to support your natural life force? Because the more you have, the more you will vibrate out. The higher your cells will vibrate. The more in line you will become with your purpose because things will be clearer. You won't be bogged down. And this is, this is my next point, and it's something that's really important, is, you know, if you are a cup, let's imagine this cup here is filled up to the top with toxins, which most of us are. If you're filled with toxins and you're pouring some really good stuff in, what's going to happen to that good stuff? Is it going to make its way in? Or is it just going to splash out? Well, you might get the odd drop that makes it in, but most of it's going to splash out. So a really key thing to do is to support your body to naturally cleanse and detoxify on a regular basis. Now, one way, one really simple way that we can do this is to make sure when we wake up, we brush our teeth first thing in the morning. A lot of people don't do this, and it surprised me because this is one of the most important ways that we can support our body detoxifying. Because your body will detoxify naturally, but it needs a bit of help sometimes because of the amount of toxins going in it. But your body overnight detoxifies, and guess where it puts all the toxins? In your mouth. That's why you wake up with your tongue coated, your mouth feeling a bit, ugh, and that first. So if you wake up and then you guzzle some water or you go and eat breakfast, what you're doing is you're washing all of those toxins straight back into your body that your body has spent all night trying to get rid of. So instead of starting your day at naught, you're starting at minus 50. And then imagine you keep doing this every day. You're accumulating this mass toxic load in your system. And that's just one way that we're accumulating a toxic load in our system. So brushing your teeth, scraping your tongue, maybe doing oil pulling if you, if you know about that, is great ways to start to aid the detoxification process. I am running, which I'm really excited about, a, can you all see that? Oh a transformative health four-week e-course um, to help support people on cleansing. Um, so week one starts next Tuesday, and it's why cleanse, what foods to introduce and eliminate. Week two is how to cleanse at a deeper level, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Week three is eliminating nanobacteria, parasites, and microorganisms with super herbs. And week four is how to eat after a cleanse to support your body ongoing. Now, this is normally £150, but until Friday, I'm doing a special discount of it for £100 if you enter the code THRIVE um, at the checkout. If you want to add a special one-hour personalised cleanse programme with me via Skype, then that's another £100. Um, so 
uh, I will send you the details. The details will be on my website, so do check that out if you do want to go deeper into a cleanse and be supported on that journey. Um, as some people do find it quite daunting, the prospect of like, well, how do I cleanse? What do I do? You know, what recipes am I going to do? So I've designed this program to help support people through that. And you can ask me questions. You know, I'll, I'll be there as much as I can to really support you on that. So someone has just said, do they brush their teeth before the lemon water? Yes, definitely. Lemon water, everything is always after you've cleaned your mouth. This is key, okay? Always clean the mouth first. So, you know, making sure we're getting rid of these toxins, A, by drinking water, B, by cleaning our mouth first. Maybe you might need to take some super greens to really start the cleanse going as well because greens really do help to eliminate toxins. Maybe looking at heavy metals and eliminating those from your systems. If you've got amalgam fillings, then you probably need to eliminate heavy metals from your body. If you've had vaccinations, then you probably need to eliminate heavy metals from your body. You may have heavy metals from the water that you're drinking. So, you know, these are key things that we need to really look at and address and um, cleanse. Chlorella is a great thing to start introducing if you're cleansing. Um, it's safe in a lot of cases. It's safe if you're pregnant. You know, there aren't really contraindications, but start with a small amount and gradually increase it. So chlorella is a really good way to aid your detoxification. So um, <laughs> there are lots of uh, candida. Yes, to, to detoxify from candida is an important one. Um, it's quite a big subject, candida. It's uh, it's something I will be covering in the detox program because it's something that a lot of people really struggle with. Obviously, if you're getting recurrent thrush, if you're um, craving a lot of sugar, these can all be signs of uh, candida overgrowths within your body. Um, and eliminating this is, is a really important thing. Uh, oregano oil does aid with the detoxification of candida, definitely. Paudiaco is an amazing one. Paudiaco is a tree from the Amazon, and the scientists there noticed that when the Paudiaco tree fell down, it wouldn't um, decompose. And most things decompose very quickly in the Amazon. So they started studying it, and they found that it's the most antifungal thing on the planet. So Paudiaco, you can make Paudiaco tea, you can take Paudiaco pills, but Paudiaco is a great way to start reducing fungal conditions in your body. Also, medicinal mushrooms are amazing at reducing fungal conditions in the body. And that sounds a bit um, counterintuitive, doesn't it? You're taking fungal things to reduce fungal conditions. Well, the medicinal mushrooms uh, send out a chemical signature, and that chemical signature wards off other fungal uh, growths. So, for example, if you see turkey tails growing in a wood, you will never see anything else or very unlikely on that log. It will just be turkey tails because it's sending out this signal, go away, go away, this is my territory. So if you're starting to take the medicinal mushrooms like turkey tails, reishi or chaga, they have a great effect at reducing fungal overgrowths within the system. So really good to look into uh, those things. Also, the medicinal mushrooms are an amazing support for the body. They support the organs really nicely. Um, so that's that's a really important thing to look at. I love the medicinal mushrooms. They're some of my favorite things and I could talk for hours about them. Um, but don't worry, I won't because we're finishing in a few minutes. So look into them. Start looking into reishi and chaga, uh, two of the main ones that a lot of research has been done on. Um, and they're very exciting. In my new book, Superfoods and How to Use Them, I have a section on the medicinal mushrooms and their benefits. Um, so they are really lovely things to start working with. So we've just got a few minutes left before we finish. I'm just going to go back and recap. I know there's been a lot of information in the session tonight, and I hope you've all enjoyed it. If anyone has any questions, please do post them up now before we finish um, in these last few minutes. Also, you can paste, post any questions up onto my Facebook page. Um, and of course, you can send me a message. That's absolutely fine too. And don't forget the code is THRIVE for your £50 discount if you are interested in doing the four-week cleanse program with me. So to recap, first of all, positive mindset. This is really key that we look at at that. Um, so uh, looking at our positive mindset, that's number one. Forgiving ourselves, how do we view ourselves? Like actually starting to view ourselves in a positive light and thinking about our many wonderful 
um, attributes. Someone's just said, how do we spell Paudiaco? I'm going to type it in to the chat box now. And Chlorella is like that, okay? And Thrive is the code. Let me put that in. Okay. Um, so how do we view ourselves? I, I'd like it if you all spent a bit more time actually looking into it and uh, thinking about your positive attributes and what your purpose is. <coughs> you know, really tune into this and, and how you can support your body, how your body, ask it. You know, tune in and just say, hey, how can I support you to fulfill your purpose? And just write down whatever comes up. Don't judge it. Don't question it. Don't let your mind get too busy. Just write it down. How can I support you, physical body, in achieving what you want to achieve, in achieving your goals? So, Ho'oponopono, forgiving yourself. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Filling your body with the things it needs to actually function, let alone thrive. What does it need to function? So we're looking at the water, the oxygen, the movement, obviously then all of your basic nutrients going in. Um, you know, these are all the key things. Your gut, helping to rebalance your gut. You are what you eat. So what actually are you going to put in your body? Is it going to make you thrive or not? You know, this is, this is really important. Thriving or not thriving? You know, th this is key. Um, and, and that's that's what I like to think when I'm picking up food. Well, is this going to make me thrive? Do I want it? No, I don't. If it's not going to do that, keep having that in your mind so that then nothing is a negative um, thing. I uh, Someone's just said, where can they get Paudiac and oil of oregano? I've got those. So if you wanted to send me a message, I can send some really lovely, high quality, um, organic um, ones of those to you. So do send me a message um, and I can get those to you, Andy. Um, if anyone doesn't know my website, it's www.julietskitchen.tv. Um, you can see me on Facebook, and it's uh, julietskitchen.tv on Facebook. My Twitter is Juliet's News, and um, Instagram, I can't remember. <laughs> but all the links are on my website anyway. So, um, you know, then obviously looking at what foods are we, we, we trying to, what do we need to reduce? Reducing sugar, reducing these things. And also, um, Clearing out, how can we support our body in detoxifying and cleansing? So these were the key points. Thank you all so much for joining me. It's been really lovely having you here and lovely seeing your comments. It's really lovely to have that interaction. And uh, your energy, as always, has been wonderful. So thank you uh, so much for being with me tonight. And I look forward to seeing you all really soon. Take care. Lots of love. Good night. <laughs>